Hey guys, crew of Blind Wave, I am Eric. Rick. I'm Calvin. Aaron. And we are back with Star Wars Rebels, where last time... What happened? Tomorrow, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Admiral Thrawn is coming back. He totally He's pissed. Is. They blew up the refinery mm -hmm. to kill one rebel. He ain't happy. It was a yeah. Jedi, which is worth, like, a lot of rebels. A lot. Sure. Yeah. But Absolutely. Yeah. They're in short supply. Uh, Ezra also, uh, after talking to some dogs, was like, hey, we got to check out what's going on with the Jedi Temple. Indeed. Store the past, redeem the future. Mm -hmm. And they gave uh, Rook a new look. Rook. Yeah, tagged him and sent him home. <laughs> they did. The clown. Um, gave him a little rebel makeover. Yeah. We also had, like, a tablet, right, that Ezra brought back with uh, some hands on it. Yep. Had number three on it. See what that's about, I guess. There's more fingers than what he has. These things aren't extinct yet. Nope. Never will be. I mean, Lothcats cats could be all extinct if Lothal's no longer around and everything's burned to death. Well, they were burning stuff. The Tukas would live. The Lothcats cats would die. Die. <laughs> This stone came from the Jedi Temple here on Lothal. That's far to the north. How did it get here? The Lothwolves gave it to me. They think the Empire is doing something terrible there. But maybe I could make more sense of them if I saw the temple up close. I agree. We have to go. I don't want the Empire putting their hands all over the temple. So let's stop them. Okay, Nan. There's just one problem. As Hera said, the temple is far to the north, and... We don't have a ship. It's cool. I was hoping you'd raise an X wing out of the ground. Oh. Where'd you get an X wing? Or a bunch of frogs. I'm just, you know, more comfortable with speeders. <laughs> oh. oh, I can smell the fear. Oh, my name is Zeb. <laughs> Zeb, those ones don't talk. <laughs> How do you know? It talks with its eyes. Chopper doesn't get one. No, he's got a rocket. He can fly. <laughs> he can be a speeder. Chooses not to. He's gotta conserve his fuel. We've never once seen him fuel up. I don't think he needs it. It's propelled by rage. It's the first time I've ever seen her use her goggles like that. <laughs> it's not often, that's for yeah. sure. She wore it when she flew the B-Wing, didn't she? No, she had a helmet with goggles on the helmet. Oh, okay. There you go. There you go. go. We're in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> that would make you sick. You just gotta get these things up to 88 miles an hour. You see some serious shit. <laughs> Does it time travel? No, just lava squirts. Ah, <laughs> uh, they're running into the grass. <laughs> Don't go into deep grass! Stay on the long grass! <laughs> Stargate. Things were getting worse just as they did back when I was your age, but back then... There were 10,000 Jedi Knights protecting the galaxy. Now, there's just you and me. I miss his old hair. Loading complete. Yep. <laughs> Kanan said they're deeply connected to the Force. I'm just glad they're on our side. They're on Lothal's side. Is there a difference? Let's hope not. Dang, right? That thing spins up, so they just dug down. Ugh. This is no military operation. You're gonna need a disguise. <laughs> Zeb is just always looking for an excuse to beat up on scout troopers. <laughs> Someone's already down. It's confusing. 
<laughs> Chopper just nice. Oh, 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 oh. Trooper! Get away from there at once! I've said it before. None of you are to touch the artifacts. The tiniest blemish could erase evidence, which is critical to understanding the gateway. Terrence Stamp. Yes, Minister. Huh? Terrence Stamp. The Hayden? Okay. The Minister. It's close. Is it? It's not Terrence Stamp. It's Michael it's McDowell. That's what I meant. Yeah. Fuck. Ten stamps the other guy. Malcolm McDowell. Malcolm, not Michael. Yeah. We have recently made some remarkable discoveries, my emperor. We must discover the secrets of the temple. For even now, our enemies move against us. We have reached the roots of symbols and iconography are reminiscent of a report I discovered in the Jedi archives. A lot the of Mortis Jedi temples gods. were built on Sith temples. Yes. Right? They are key to unlocking the temple. I am sure of it. The death of Kanan Jarrus has altered the fate of Lothal. Though how, I cannot say. We must seize the power within. A conduit between the living and the dead. Uh, proceed, Minister Hydam. Hera, did you hear? What should we do? I don't like it. We can't let him enter the temple. Then they'll crack the code. It's only a matter of time. We'll keep watch, but I want you both out of there if I give you the order. Before. Whenever Ahsoka visited us on Adalon, it was always nearby. Look! The hands! They're the same on the figures as the ones here on the stone. Then that means something. Ezra, it's art. Everything has a meaning. Those lines are like paths, and the rings are planets. Or, or doorways. Okay, but which one leads into the temple? We're about to find out. It's your turn, now do your thing. Right. <laughs> Touch it. Wait, it's what not too thing? loud. Whatever it is you do to open the temple. Uh, Kanan and I always opened it together. It takes a master and an apprentice, he said. Well, you're gonna have to think of something, and fast. LS-515. Why aren't you on patrol? I thought I saw something moving over here, but um, it was just the shadows. That's a restricted area. I was just following protocol, sir. Code 6110. This is all very irregular. We're gonna have to call it in. If you do that, I'll be late for my assignment. Like you said, we're just following protocol. Operation says you and LS-412 deviated from your patrol route and never finished the perimeter sweep. Let's go over to Operations and straighten this out. Great. Now we're both gonna have to file a report. <laughs> <laughs> listen. Kanan said to listen.
coming back to his painting and like, where the hell the dogs go? <laughs> <laughs> what the dog I, doing? I call the emperor. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs are gone. Bella. your friend. Gotcha. It's like Mario. Yes, <laughs> Jumping into the painting. He understands. <laughs> there he is. Come on, let's Here. do it. <laughs> Nine and three quarters. Yep. <laughs> uh, well, well, well. What'd you guys think? Mm, all very mysterious and intriguing. Very, yeah. It's, we've seen the Mortis stuff in Clone Wars. We did. We had uh, the Mortis trilogy with the, the son, the daughter, and the father. Which I, I like their depictions on that tablet of being light, dark, and balance. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. we see the wolves on that symbol as well. So we do. did they come from Mortis? I mean, I, Ezra's answer is I don't know. <laughs> Though, if you do rewatch Mortis, there are some wolves in the sky uh, in that kind of like main chamber the father's in. Yeah. If you look up, the constellations have at least one wolf in them. We just chalked it up to, nah, it's fucking Dave. He likes wolves. Which Somebody threw it in there. Which you still can. He yeah. Does. He does <laughs> but it a lot. Definitely. But, you know. <laughs> uh, not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily answer yeah. anything. Could just be Dave being Dave. Yeah. Sure. The closest thing that we have is just, like, Ezra pointing to, like, well, the you know the daughter here has this bird thing. Yeah. And then we, su we see this bird, like, when Ahsoka was yeah. here on Adeline. And we have yeah. that bird flying around, you know? So it's mm -hmm. like, that's that's a closer connection than the wolves, necessarily, but... Yeah, the daughter uh, in the Mortis trilogy, we know that she would turn into, a, like, a big griffin-like bird. And then we also know that she gave up her, like, life essence for Ahsoka. Ahsoka actually died in that moment, and the daughter, like, transferred something, some type of life energy to her. And now we have that bird kind of following Ahsoka around. Yeah. True. They didn't, like... They didn't really remember what happened when they came back, right? Um, they no. kind of thought it was a dream in a way, and then you also had the clones or the admiral being like, "You were only gone for a minute," you know, like. Yeah. So like there was like a weird thing of like, did that happen or did it not happen? But it was we a just force see, vision. You know, we didn't actually do it. Anakin didn't remember anything. Sure, for sure. Obi yeah. one I think filed a report, and I think that's what the emperor's referencing, referencing the as the Mortis, Mortis he gods calls and them stuff. The Mortis gods, mm. and. Uh, you know, yeah, because Anakin chose not to be the balance, right? <clears throat> the sun really influences Anakin by showing him a future, but he says the future, and that's when Anakin sees that he sees that Vader s helmet in the smoke moment. Remember mm -hmm. that? And he goes full on dark, and there's some great moments in that, but he ends up not remembering those things for better or for worse. Yeah, Mortis is a very uh, it's always yeah. an interesting when it pops up because a lot of people confuse, or not confuse, but a lot of people accuse George Lucas of taking the mystery out of the Force, and then he just came in one day to the Clone Wars office and said, I want to do this story. It's called the Mortis Trilogy. And everyone's like, what the fuck does this mean? He's like, exactly. <laughs> but he's like, if you can understand this, you will have known everything about the Force. And Dave, who knows everything about the Force, is like, I don't get it. And he's like, well, maybe one day you will. <laughs> so all this stuff is George Lucas uh, and how he sees this. Sure. I really like in the, uh, in the way that stone carving or paintings are moving, the balance tips to the dark side. It points at it, you know? Like, and the Emperor is doing something. The Loth Wolves are doing something. Like, there's... Definitely mysterious forces here, but it's what our characters can get from it, what they can understand. That's important. 
Well, where does this gateway go? Yeah. It seems like there's multiple exits, but do you go to like a nexus and then somewhere else? Yeah. Or is it more like a Stargate and you go from one to the other? Sure. Yeah. Like they were saying like too, like where the door should have been for the temple was just like stone. Yeah. So it's like, what's going on? They've dug down to where like you figure you would have found the entrance by now. So there's definitely like a, a mystery that even Ezra's like, I don't understand why... I understand, you know? <laughs> but he's also new to being a Jedi and all this yeah, stuff, too. Is. So it's hard for him to kind of, like, understand. He's just going off what he knows from Kanan. What and he doing it from alone. Wolves. Yeah. And from Maul. And, and from, from Maul. Maul. Like, they had Soka to have a little two, bit, to get, maybe. two to get into the Sith Temple, two to get into the Jedi Temple. And we've seen in this Jedi Temple, like, certain people see certain things, and there is kind of, like, this kind of weird feeling of uh, it being bigger on the inside or, or stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if he'll travel to Mortis, or if he'll just go inside the temple. Like, what does the Emperor want with this? Yeah, what is he after? What's he hoping for? Yeah. Like, did he... Like, it'd be interesting to know, like, what did Obi-Wan put in, like... Wh whatever the report would be that he might have, like... Is did he, he draw looking... any diagrams or anything, like... Sh sure, but, like, if he wrote out everything, like, this place where these people were, the power they had, and the things they could do, all things that he could be, like, he sought... You know, like he's, he's, he's wanting, he's, mm -hmm. he's looking for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like, if his goal is, like, I need to find them, take this power for myself, like, that seems very Palpatine, you know, of yeah. you know, knowing how to control life and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I do like on the idea of, like, the Force has no mystery, but then, like, through Clone Wars and then through Rebels here, like, you get more of, like, well, what is the Force? And you have, like, these other civilizations or cultures that are, using the force in different ways and it's more magical or it's more of like a mystic fortune telling in a way or you know whatever the case may be and then yeah. here you have like these wolves where it's like how did we get across the planet you know how are we running and we dive into the grass and it's like I don't know Kanan said they had a deep connection to the force but like what does that mean and how does it work and <laughs> it's just something new and different to like yeah. what it, exactly is the force and how does he, it all connect it, it seems know? it seems like Kanan had a conversation with that greater white wolf uh, Loth Wolf, he said, I understand. He goes off on this mission that he knows he's not coming back from, I assume. Uh, and the Emperor here says that the death of Kanan Jer Jarrus has changed the fate of Lothal. Sure. But he doesn't really understand how or why. Yeah. Just, Is it you know. because of the Tide Defender? Is it because of the Jedi Temple? Mm -hmm. Is it because of, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, like did it drive Ezra to do this? Yeah. Yeah. Which maybe having like before. a closer connection to the force here on Lothal through Kanan, Ezra can make that connection and that will actually travel through yeah. having the guidance of Kanan through the force. Maybe he's able to like figure things out better. I I, I like so far the depiction of the Loth wolves where they don't seem like they're not on our side they're not really against anyone or for anyone they're for Lothal they're on their own like they uh, they're not light they're not dark they just they are this like almost like nature spirit mm -hmm. that doesn't care about galactic politics <laughs> sure know? it cares yeah. about it's, it's something deep is deeply wrong with what the Empire is yeah. doing well, it, it cares about the planet mm -hmm. yeah I like that, like, the normal Loth wolves are yeah. gray, yeah. but the one that has a stronger connection to Ezra is mm -hmm. white. Yeah. It's like the the wolves are themselves being balanced yeah. in the opposite of sure. the way the, you know, with the Emperor and all yeah. the, the dark side stuff going on. Which I think, I think it's important that they made them, like, they're also scary. <laughs> yeah. They're nine feet tall at the shoulder. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about Kanan changing or like changing Lothal and stuff too. I've been watching through Rebels with uh, my kids, uh -huh. and in season one, um, it's around the time whenever uh, the the Inquisitor captures Kanan and they have to go and cap yeah. they have to go save him and everything. We have the end of the first season happening. Mm -hmm. um, before they go to do the radio tower thing, there's a time when Kanan's talking to Ezra and he has a line where it's like, you know, at some point we all might have to make a sacrifice for the greater good, mm -hmm. and. I, I like that being there because I, I didn't think about it you know when I first watched it I don't remember if I was in the reactions during then or not I can't remember now but in that moment there and I wouldn't want to said anything you wouldn't have said anything because it, yeah. it fits with Kanan later on but there's Hera feeling like he didn't want to be in this battle he didn't want to do it but there's like that 
mixture of like, well, what did he do? What did he talk to the wolves about? Yeah. And like his sacrifice, whether it's for the Tide Defender, whether it's for the temple, you know, for the force to stop the emperor, whatever the case may be of why he did it. Like it, it feeds back to that season one moment there where he's like, at some point we all might have to sacrifice ourselves for the greater good. Yeah. I kind of like that a lot. Me too. Yeah. I, I like how they do stuff with different characters. I, I like in this one, Sabine goes with Ezra. Um, not because she's going to help him be able to fight her way in or out or anything necessarily, but because she knows art. Mm-hmm. And it's like an extra skill. It makes me think of like a D&D party, which all of Rebels kind of has a D&D party Sure, aspect, she can right? roll yeah. like a skill and stuff. <laughs> and like, you need to be able to look at the uh-huh. art and understand it and stuff and maybe like, okay, well, I did my thing. Now it's your turn. I just figured out some information. <laughs> you know? it's, yeah. it's, it's a neat way of having like different aspects of each character yes. and what they're good at. Like Hera's a good pilot. Yeah. Without any force, she's a good pilot. You know, Sabine, like she's a great Mandalorian, but she also knows art, mm-hmm. and that's it's a different. It's not like a battle aspect that helps, yeah. but it's something that helps with the story and it does. What Ezra needs and to know, and I, I like that a lot. It's something that makes Grand Admiral Thrawn a very threatening character because he kind of has those attributes of all of them. Sure. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, they called whatever this is a gateway, but they also called it a conduit between the living and the dead, mm-hmm. which I'm sure Palpatine is interested in that. Mm. Yeah, if mm. he could, uh, if he could. Channel all of the energy from all of the dead Sith. Um, I'm sure that would be very good for him yeah. in the long run. Yeah, if he could be like all the Sith or something. Yeah, S- something like Jedi, that. Yeah. All the Jedi. And I wonder if it was because we're close to this conduit. Is that why Ezra or not Ezra? Kanan appeared next to. Sure, I Hera. like to think of that too. Of like, it's not because Force Ghost things happen, but yeah. I don't think this is a Force Ghost moment. Mm-hmm. But I think it's her f- kind of feeling Kanan. Mm-hmm. It's like that idea of like when people are like, I, you know, I, you know, my husband passed, and I, I felt that he was sitting next to me. You know, yeah. it's not necessarily like if Zeb would have looked over, he'd have seen him too, like you would at Endor or something at the end of Return yeah. of the Jedi. But I think it's just Hera's like thinking, and she feels that Kanan's there with them. And also, this could be a, it, like you said, it could be a heavy force area being at a temple a Jedi temple and whatnot, and specifically <clears throat> with Mortis iconography right yeah in Mortis so, Qui-Gon could physically be is, seen is it like a thinning of the veil in a way where it's like mm-hmm. this is a thin yeah. place where like maybe Kanan can kind of peek through a little bit but I always thought of it as being like Hera just feeling him a bit through the force I honestly like both of them and accept them both at the same time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because maybe there is something about Hera <laughs> that makes her a little more attuned to, to that like her love of Kanan can you know, everybody sure. everybody can use the force at a certain Yeah. I just I love that like Calvin said too, like that transition there is just it's from like back here yeah. and it just comes around and after you yeah. pass by he's just there with his hand. Mm-hmm. Gets me. Yeah. <laughs> it does. And it's a force ghost in that like you can see the color. He's too, colored, yeah. You know? Like yeah. It, almost as like as well, every, it was like a gradient almost. Yeah. Like you could see like straight up Force Ghost all sure. blue and everything and then full color Kanan. And like as we saw Obi-Wan in the original trilogy, like the first time we saw him as a Force Ghost and the last time, he would get more solid. To the point where George Lucas was actually contemplating a story beat in which he could return from the dead <laughs> at one point. And that was kinda like to show that, but I think it's just uh I, I, I think that like the more color, the more physical they look or feel is uh, a, is more evocative of the place they're at or the person they're speaking with as they can become more real in their mind. Sure. Right? Like, like Hoth doesn't have any force no. sensitivity yeah. at all. But when you get to Dagobah, yeah. maybe Obi-Wan can come through a little bit stronger and there because you're in a yeah. very heavy... And when you're in Ock 2 and Yoda shows up, he can, he can like, Summon physically lightning. destroy this building, you know? <laughs> sure. Because the veil, maybe, is, is, is thin. Yeah. So places where it's, yeah, where it's just stronger in force. And I don't know, like indoor, it might be an interesting place because like Vader's death there, right? Like there's, like we we kind of did our own fan film with it and had like the idea of like this place is strong with the force, mm-hmm. as well as you know Vader, you know, yeah. died here. But mm-hmm. maybe it's more so because of Vader dying there too. But like sure. you had all three of them there, mm-hmm. and you could see them all really well. Yep. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Also, the emperor died there. Maybe that has anything to do with it. Mm, who knows? <laughs> there, was a, there was a place of joy in that moment. Yeah. Was, uh, in that indoor village. Yeah. Um, we had a new imperial here. Uh, Hayden? Yeah. Hayden. Yeah. Uh, 
And they say, like, I've never seen an Imperial like that before, though technically we have. Uh, we've, we've seen Rogue One, and there's a Vanille, uh, the attendant of Vader. Like, he's a very small character, but when we go to Mustafar, and Vader's in his, uh, like, back-to-tank thing, there's a guy that's, like, bowing, and he says, uh, you know, Krennic has arrived or whatever. And that guy's also, I think, a minister, kind of dressed the same. Hmm. And I believe whenever they were incepting this, this was it was going to be Vanille, this character, but for some reason, the last second, they end up changing it. I don't know if maybe they had some plans for that other character or that fell through or something, but it was going to be the same guy, uh, but it's not. So we have seen a guy like that, and they're not necessarily Imperial military as opposed to the, some type of advisor or spiritual guy. Sure, because they said, like, this isn't a military operation. Yeah, yeah under, it's a uh, directive like a science officer. <clears throat> yeah. Now, voiced by Malcolm McDowell. Has Malcolm McDowell done Malcolm, a, yes. a voice before in um, Star Wars? In Star Wars? Not that I can remember. I know that he's been in Star Trek. Well, yeah. yeah. Now, like, I'm trying to think. How many people have been in both? Sure. <laughs> Star Wars and Star there's Trek. A, I mean, there's a small group. In the people. animated, there's been a few. Yeah. There was, uh, shoot, who was the guy that did, um, I think he was the, the senator, who, right, who was doing the, like, against the Empire, but really he was just... Not he was with the Empire and was oh, trying to travel. Sure, yeah. Oh, you're Senator talking about Tr- Tr- Travis? Travis, I think. But yeah, I think Travis. he was someone from Star Trek. Call Travis. Um, George Decay. George Decay, of course. Has been in it before. Um, there's been a couple others too. Yeah. At least voicing. Yeah. I don't know about like any of the live action elements or anything, but I know there's been a few Star mm-hmm. Trek. J.J. Abrams. It's funny. There was recently. Uh, <laughs> there was a. Uh, crossword puzzle in the New York Times I think it was yeah and uh, across the question was uh, the best of two popular sci-fi star franchises series yeah. and if you put in Star Trek or Star Wars because they both fit it worked yeah <laughs> yeah like so they, like the interacting there were, letters there was, there was one changed. that was like um, a word that proceeds with band and it was wristband or waistband yeah. Depending on which one you put in, and all of them had that kind of thing. It was payee or payer, mm. and I was like, "Well, that was kind of cool to have an idea." Where, really like, cool. You can pick whichever one yeah. you want, and it still works the whole way. So, but which one is right? <laughs> uh. <coughs> um, I also, uh, what do you guys think of the guy that's playing the emperor? Pretty good impression, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Always love when they can bring an original actor back. Yes, yes indeed. Oh, Ian McDermott. Mm-hmm. It does have just a slightly different feel. Mm-hmm. Not that Sam Whitworth does a bad job sure. by any means. No. He does an incredible job. It's an incredible impression. But it is an impression. It is. I agree. And any time that you can get the original actor back, it just has such... I don't know. It's not fair to Sam, yep. but it feels so much more real. <laughs> Sam was okay. <laughs> he would tell you the first thing I would if you could get them, then give me a paycheck. Yeah, yeah. No, I uh, I agree. Like I know he had conflicted feelings about Darth Maul. Darth Maul, in that not just getting the role, but they kind of approached Peter Sinefinowitz for the solo uh, cameo that Maul has. And they ended up not going that way to the point where they had Peter actually record those lines, but they wanted to have a more cohesion of Darth Maul, and they chose to go with Sam. And I know that he had a rough time with that. Yeah. Uh, like it's like okay, I understand because we're bringing you know people want this Clone Wars version of of Maul. Yes, but that's the guy, you know. Sure. So yeah, but it, like he's changed from who he was before <laughs> yes. too, yeah. right? Like. Yeah, you know when we he's see changed. Maul again in Clone Wars, he's not the same no, Maul. So not. like his voice changing, I think yeah. can work and it's okay. But no, I could definitely see being the other guy, and like, yeah. well, damn, why didn't they get me to be Maul in the Clone Wars series? Well, damn, why don't I get to be Maul in, in this? I was Maul, you know. Yep. Yeah. So I do like the uh, the uh, Hollow Trick mm-hmm. using uh, <laughs> using a, uh, yeah a message that was already recorded. Uh, made me think of. Transformers, mm-hmm. <laughs> Mirage, a little bit. Do that a lot. Is that from the cartoon? Yeah, gotcha. I thought you were talking about Bumblebee, how he could only talk in broadcasts. <laughs> no, 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 no. Back in the old cartoon, that was like their go-to move. I'm like, we need the Decepticons to fight here. Let's make a giant thing for them. Optimus to shoot Prime. At. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> I, just, 
I think it's really interesting that as they are somehow teleporting or moving through Lothal, we have a vision that looks like hyperspace Mm -hmm. moving through space. Sure. Uh, And then, like, flashbacks, you know, to an extent of, like, but they actively heard those voices. Not just the Force users, either. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Zeb's like, I don't know what just happened. You know, but Sabine's like, did you hear that? Uh, It it is interesting. It's but like I, instead of hyperspace, it's force space. Yeah. It's like the yeah. You can see things that happened that like influenced the force. Yeah. Or the, the force was guiding Kanan, mm-hmm. or you know having him see these things. Yeah. And but I mean you know from what we know about hyperspace, it's not just moving very very fast. I mean you have to move very fast to get into it. Sure. But it is technically like this almost like other dimension that uh, it exists. So. Very interesting. I, I love invoking that uh, that line of Kanan when when the Grand Inquisitor has removed Ezra and you think Ezra's dead. Kanan should be unbalanced because he should because be of the grief. loss. But at that moment, he's like, "You fucked up." Because now I don't fear anything else. And he became balanced. It's what the Jedi strive for. They almost never get. They strive for balance by not having something to worry about, to fear. But Kanan, in that moment, he gets to do it. And I like yeah. that they invoke that, then show what the personification of the balance with the father is. It's just a really cool connection to, to throw in there for that flashback. <sighs> Kanan's the father, Ezra's the son, and Ahsoka's the daughter. Is Ezra He's... dark? Mm-hmm. But you know who the son is. Sam Witwer! Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> True. You can't take that from him. No. <laughs> His original character. He yes. started voicing. <laughs> Which is always, I've always found interesting because the design of the sun looks very much like an alternate version from the Force Unleashed. The Star Killer. Uh, there was like a dark looking Star Killer character that looked exactly like the sun. With the, the facial tattoos. And Star Killer, played by Sam Yeah. Really cool. <laughs> We all should be as lucky as fans to be able to be ingrained so hard into Star Wars, Sam. Fuck. He's everywhere. As he should be. Look at his face. I know. Look at that face. Uh, but also, you know what you should look at? The subscribe button. It's yeah. under this video. Please hit it because it looks so good. <laughs> uh, this is the year of one million subscribers. But this is also the time that you want to go to patreon.com slash blindway and watch the next four episodes because holy shit, we're going to have some fun.